Well hello guys and welcome back to my channel and today's chapter will be about bleeding and wounds so uh, this will be number three uh, number four in our first aid video series so uh, we're going to be discussing on what is wounds how to treat wounds and uh, how to contain bleeding so yeah without any further ado let's get to it Hi guys, subscribe to my channel now so that you do not forget. Hit that bell icon and get notified of my further uploads. Lastly, feel free to comment. Show me some love by giving me a thumbs up at the end of the video. Okay, so the first one we're going to be talking about is external bleeding. So external bleeding refers to when blood can be seen coming from an open wound. The term hemorrhage refers to large amounts of bleeding in a short time. So, how do you recognize external bleeding? Injuries damage blood vessels and cause bleeding. Three types of bleeding relate to the types of blood vessels that is damaged. Capillaries, veins and arteries. Now, capillary bleeding is wounds that um, ooze steadily but slowly. It is the most common type of bleeding and easiest to control. Venous bleeding flows steadily because it is under less pressure. It does not spurt and it is easy to control. But arterial bleeding spurts when, with each heartbeat. The pressure that causes the blood to spurt also makes the type of bleeding difficult to control. This is the most serious type of bleeding because in a large amount of blood can be lost in a very short time. Now, there are several types of injuries that you can get. One is called an abrasion. The top layer of the skin is removed with little blood loss. Other names for an abrasion can be a scrape, road rash or rug burn. Then lacerations, a cut skin with jagged edge. This type of wound is usually caused by forceful tearing away of skin tissue. Incision is a cut with smooth edges such as a knife or paper cut. Puncture, injured from a sharp pointy object such as a knife, ice pick or bullet that enters the body. The risk of infection is high. An evulsion is a piece of skin torn loose and hanging from the bone. And then lastly is an amputation, which is the cutting or tearing of a body part. Okay, so let's quickly take care of the external bleeding. To take care of external bleeding involves controlling the bleeding and protecting the wound from further injury. So first of all, wear your PPE, wear examination gloves, and if you don't have that, you can use whatever is available like several layers of gauze pads, clean cloth, plastic wrap, or even plastic bags or waterproof material. Secondly, expose the wound by removing or cutting clothing away to find the source of the bleeding. Place a dressing such as a sterile gauze pad or clean cloth over the wound and apply direct pressure with your hand. This stops most of the bleeding. If the victim is bleeding from an arm or leg, elevate the injury area above the heart to reduce blood flow so you can continue to apply pressure. That means just lift up the arm above the heart level. To free you to attend to other injuries, apply a pressure bandage to hold the dressing in place. Wrap a roller gauze bandage in a spiral pattern tightly over the dressing and above and below the wound. If blood soaks through the dressing and bandage, do not remove the old ones. Apply an additional dressing and pressure bandage on top of the first one. If the bleeding still cannot be controlled, apply pressure at a pressure point while keeping pressure on the wound. A pressure point is when artery near the skin surface or passes close to the bone, against which it can be pressed. The most accessible pressure points on the both sides of the body are the brachial pressure point in the inside of the upper arm and the femoral pressure point in the groin. I have added the temporal pressure point as well. So all that means is if there's any bleeding below this point, if you put pressure on that artery, you can stop the bleeding going further down. Now the brachial artery, which is on your arm, you can find it between the muscle. If you feel your muscle where your, where your bicep is, there's like a little indentation. If you press in there, you're going to press on top of that artery. The femoral one is extremely difficult to find. It's just next to the groin. 
but to keep the pressure on that thing is like pressing a hose pipe that's how much pressure is in there you're gonna have to use both your thumbs and you're going to have to basically lie on top of that point to be able to put pressure on it when you have finished treating the wound please remember to wash your hands and don't put pressure on an eye or on the head where you can suspect there might be a skull fracture internal bleeding is bleeding that happens inside the body it's not something that you're going to see easily so to recognize it you have to look for signs of bruising painful or tender area vomiting or coughing up blood or stool that is black or contains bright red blood for internal bleeding call back up immediately or an ambulance care for shock by raising the victim's legs 6 to 12 inches and cover the victim to maintain warmth if vomiting occurs roll the victim onto his left side to keep the airway clear and monitor his breathing do not give the guy anything to eat or drink it could cause nausea and vomiting which could result in aspiration food or liquid could cause applica uh, complications if surgery is needed so uh, yeah up to then guys in our next chapter i will show you how to deal with wounds like these and uh, we will be discussing special wound care like what do you do with an amputated part or anything like that otherwise if you like this video please remember to give me a thumbs up please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon if you want to get notified of any further uploads until next time cheers Please head over to my webpage at www.cryptzone.co.za and come and check out the page. You will notice there is a lot of information on there. Hyperlinks are provided so that you don't have a problem going anywhere. Head up to my podcast page and come and see what am I currently working on on my podcast. There is also the Cryptzone live page which I will update regularly to let you know when I'm going to do the next show like this one. The goal is to try and do one every week. Head on over to my CryptZone YouTube page and come and check out what are the latest videos that I am working on and also what new videos is up and coming. If you have any queries or questions, don't hesitate to ask. You can email me at shoal.reaper at gmail.com.